How about some identity politics for the scientific mind? Hey y'all, so welcome to another sit down chat with me. We're talking about identity politics, but today I was gonna change the framing a little bit. And actually, I'm not going to be bringing you a lot of the information. I'm actually gonna be referring you to another source that I discovered randomly, but however, you know, making videos, several videos on identity politics, suddenly, you know, on the right side column, I've been getting um, you know, recommendations for other videos to watch, which has been great. So just asking the question about identity politics has opened up so many doors to information that I had not previously considered, not to mention the fact that so many of you have had great things to say about the topic. And I imagine that this is one of the, this is going to be one of those like sleeper topics that as this particular, you know, set of videos uh, sit, people will be coming back to them and, you know, adding things to them. In fact, uh, Jesse Fruworth um, and I have been having an exchange that's gone back and forth over the last couple of days with, you know, people sleeping on things and then coming back and talking. And of course, there are folks who have brought in, you know, more, you know, have focused more on the racial aspects of it, which is not something that I really intended to do. You know, there are folks that had criticisms of things like, um, like um, what, what were things that people like affirmative action action, right? And I have, you know, uh, and I'm not presenting, I'm presenting these ideas not so much to say identity politics is good or identity politics is a bad thing, but, you know, just what is identity politics? What are the ways that it is, you know, deployed uh, effectively and not effectively? And sometimes effective deployment of, of a concept has a dis has a destructive you know effect because that's the, the that's that's what someone was really trying to do right so if we're trying to use identity to divide people then we can use identity to divide people if we want to use identity to bring people together it is certainly possible but I imagine one of the reasons that um, a lot of folks are uncomfortable with the idea of identity is that it's so human right it's like it's it's the most personal thing who am i is the question right it's been the subject of drama since you know for for all time right that's you know oedipus the king is the you know is all about the, the question of who am i right and so the fact that this might be a topic that overwhelms the, you know, overwhelms the inferior mind. Not that anybody's mind is inferior, but if you're not ready to go there and get down and dirty and thinking of, think about who you are and who you are in the context of the world that you live in, then identity politics is going to be overwhelming. But before we jump in, I want to just talk a little bit about uh, a little bit of an update for me. So you guys know, my last couple of days in Brooklyn, I am going to be heading back to Detroit on Monday. And I might actually do the thing that I, you know, like least, uh, and that is trying to do the trip in one day. So yeah, so I might be doing that. Found out, however, that I've been driving around in a car without a catalytic converter. Here's the story. A few years ago, I had my catalytic converter stolen from my car. It was just cut out from under the car, which apparently happens a lot if you drive an element because they sit so high off the ground and they have like a fancy uh, catalytic converter that's got like platinum in it or something like that. And so it's really expensive. People want to steal it. So I uh, had it stolen a couple years ago, as a matter of fact, and went immediately to have it replaced because, you know, I don't want my car polluting the world and I also don't want to, you know, be in the car being, you know, poisoned by, by fumes either. So I got it replaced. It wasn't super, super expensive. Um, it wasn't that cheap either, but it wasn't super expensive. And I've been driving around, but since then, the, you know, the engine light has been coming on. Just, it, it's been on. And so the car was not going to pass inspection this year. And, you know, Chris had a lot of, you know, went and had a lot of work done on the car to get things, you know, taken care of. And it wasn't going to pass inspection. And so, actually this happened last summer. I'm saying a few years ago, but it was last summer that the catalytic converter was stolen. So it's been a year. So it's really since, probably since the last time the car had to be inspected. 
So he goes and if you, uh, we, uh, he has it checked out. It won't pass, the, the engine light won't go off. It can't pass inspection if the light, if the engine light is going on. So he goes in and they check out the catalytic converter. They had replaced my old catalytic converter with a dummy catalytic converter. It looked like a catalytic converter on the outside, but it was really just like, it was basically a costume of a catalytic converter that had been added to the car. So I've been driving around in this car with it kicking out pollutants, not just kicking them out, but probably breathing in all kinds of pollutants now for, you know, a year, which is terrible, terrible, terrible. So, um, that was replaced. That had to be replaced. And it also, like the air, you know, monitor and some other things were checked. So I'm going to be driving back in a car that's, you know, just been fully checked out. So I guess I should feel better about that. But yeah, kind of scary, right? So, you know, having some work done, um, you don't want to think that you have to pay someone else to check up on work that someone has just gotten done. But in the future, if I get any work done, I'm probably going to have somebody come behind and, and look at the work just to make sure everything is okay. Anyway, that's what that is. Um, so I did go, I went to see um, a play the other night. I told you all that I was going to see a play called Three Fifths which was certainly interesting. It's showing, um, it's showing like downtown Manhattan near Greenwich. Um, so basically near kind of the, where Greenwich and Rector come together, not far from Wall Street. And it's an interesting play that is, was, it's very environmental. Uh, you go in and it's a carnival of kind of racism and then there's like a racism cabaret that's presented but you spend most of the time you have to walk in you have to declare your race and you can only declare your race as white or black and then they mark you i i declared my race as black and they put a black mark on my forehead and uh if you declare yourself as white you get a white you know mark on your forehead um and then you're treated accordingly as you move through the piece it's a little bit along the lines of like sleep no more although i didn't see sleep no more but uh um uh yeah so so yeah the it's called three fifths and i'll include some information about that in the description box below Interestingly, uh, I'm not going to say that I, I, I don't want to uh, criticize the piece too much. Certainly, it was an interesting experience if you've never, um, you know, seen sort of an environmental theater piece. It's, I definitely recommend seeing a piece like this. Um, f uh, the subject matter for me, I, I could have actually uh, not seen the cabaret. Um, having spent the last year working on a piece called Ready, Set, Go, Race, to sit in a cabaret that, you know, treated the topic and didn't, as far as I was concerned, didn't go as deep into it as we went in, in Ready, Set, Go Race. But however, the portion of the evening that was dedicated to this kind of carnival of, it's called supremacy land. It's a, basically a carnival of white supremacy, um, which was kind of fun and in, in a disturbing way. Um, that was worth, I think, the ticket price. And I, I believe the tickets were not very expensive, maybe $25. And um, it might be closing this weekend. So I'll, like I said, I'll include some links in the description box below. I also wanted to, got, I wanted to give you all a food update. So I... I went out with friends to dinner and they had recommended a place called Pizza Moto. And I, you know, when they recommended it, I just thought, you know, I never see these friends. I'll go, you know, I'm sure there'll be something on the menu for me. And I looked and it turned out that they actually have, you know, specifically ve vegan items on the menu. They have a vegan pizza and it was, you know, it was, uh, that was great. And I went, you know, it was a little weird having, you know, every, you know, there's so much dairy involved, right? We, we didn't have really big, um, you know, consumers of actual like animal flesh in the group, but you know, people who, you know, watching people consume that much cheese and then not really wanting to get into it with, with them, you know, why I don't eat those things. I was able to scratch the surface and hopefully leave them with some curiosity to go back and learn some more for themselves why eating dairy isn't a good idea. Um, but uh, regardless, I got really sick. I got really sick, and I think it's just that I've been eating such a clean um, diet these days. I've been eating mostly raw fruits and vegetables. I have like this sprouted, I've been eating like Ezekiel sprouted grain raisin toast. That's the basically the cooked thing that I've been eating. Um, and so to go from eating just a very 
clean diet without a lot of processed foods to suddenly having something, I don't know what they used, I don't, I don't know if it was oil, I don't know what it was, but regardless, it made me terribly, terribly sick. So I was up this morning terribly sick and you know was feeling sick until well into the morning and so it's pretty late in the day right now that I'm making this video. So yeah, I don't wanna give the place a bad review but just going from very clean eating and then introducing something like, you know, grilled dough into your diet, probably not a great idea and I certainly won't do that again. I try to stay away from, you know, wheat products. We've talked about this already but now I will be, you know, trying to run away from those things. So about this whole idea of identity, identity politics, social identity, yeah, it's a big thing, right? So um, I came across an interesting content creator. Um, the name is Daniel Estrada, and the video of Daniel Estrada's that I came across was Our Place, and it's, you know, slash r slash place and i don't know i think it's maybe a reddit a reddit uh something that happened on reddit our place shows how identity politics works without all the human bullshit and i saw that and i was like oh i don't know how to take that so i went and i checked out this video um because of course you know i understand that there are some people who really don't want to get into the human part of stuff right there are people who uh, just don't like to get into the human stuff but, uh, you know, as humans, sometimes you have to get into the human stuff. But this is a video specifically for people who don't like to get into the human stuff. And Daniel Estrada breaks it down and uses the creation of this. Um, it was a kind of an art piece that was created collectively uh, on, I guess it was on Reddit. And, and, you know, please go and check out the video. I'll include a link to it in the description box below. So that was one video. And it's a really amazing demonstration of how identity politics works. And it really, the, 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 the main focus of it is that it, um, identity can give purpose, focus, passion. It can assist in coordination. <clears throat> and apparently in the creation of this, of this piece, people, you know, declared themselves in the space, in this collective space, by what it was that they wanted to accomplish. And so you had, you know, the folks who were making the flag and the folks who were making this corner blue and the kind of adversity that they came up against in that process, but that they were ultimately successful because they had declared their identity at the very beginning. And then in another video uh, that is called Social Identity, it's a response to, um, I think it's Jordan Green, something um but i'll include a link to it in the description box below and in that um video uh daniel gets into you know that part of the brain uh and i think it's like the frontal cortex where our ability to recognize and establish context is 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 um developed and it's this part of the brain that we depend on to make the snap decisions about other people and about things that we want to do and what we don't want to do and what we want to eat and where we want to live and how we want to have fun and all of this stuff is being stored in a part of our brains and it's and it and it basically sets ourselves it sets us within a social context and uh Identity politics can be a challenge to what an individual has established in their brain uh, as far as their understanding of the world. And this might be, you know, one, why people can be so resistant to the idea of, of identity politics. One, because it's a challenge to their own identity politics. And um, also, you know, this idea that that development of that place in the brain that stores all of the information that we need to make the decisions that we need to make um, is being affected by the images that are being dri driven at us every day and the messages that we're getting from parents about who is good and who is bad. And so things like, you know, racism and and sexism and gender and all of these things are, you know, established in this one part of the brain. And this is really explained, um, you know, 
quite scientifically in these two videos um, by Daniel Estrada. So I am going to urge you to check those out. I don't know anything else about uh, Daniel Estrada except that they are a lecturer at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. So this is someone who's a, like a technology person. I think it's someone who like builds robots. So someone for whom I think maybe artificial intelligence is is maybe you know maybe more of a an area of interest. But I think um, coming at this question maybe from a more scientific place might or looking at it in a more scientific context might be what some people need to have a firmer understand a firmer understanding of it but um i was fascinated by both the videos and so i hope that you will watch them i'm not going to keep you much longer because you got some work to do and then we can talk about those things maybe later on on sunday during the live live stream which is going to be happening this sunday at 11 a.m eastern daylight time i look forward to seeing some of you there um, then that's it. Yeah, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto.